Vibes Cartel is said to be responsible for much of the modern look and sound of dancehall music. He achieved great success on the charts in his homeland, created a loyal fan base, and also weathered the storm dealing with some major controversial moments. Even though he had a difficult time breaking into markets outside of the Caribbean, his influence still managed to capture the attention of many international stars he since had the opportunity to work with, such as Busta Rhymes, Rihanna, and Missy Elliott. Everything would come to a grinding halt, however, when he found himself arrested, charged, and eventually convicted of a heinous crime he'd paid dearly for, with multiple decades of his life behind bars. Jamaican dancehall recording artist, songwriter, and producer, Adija Palmer, better known as Vibes Cartel, was born in the capital city of Kingston and raised in Portmore. He grew up with five other siblings in a household, not unlike many Caribbean households, that emphasized excellence in education. Adija, who was a very intelligent boy and excelled in many subjects, still chose to put his time and energy into the pursuit of his artistic passions. He was always surrounded by his uncles, all of which were DJs, and he became fascinated just from watching them work. He knew at a very young age, music was his calling. Adija's refusal to take school seriously eventually caught up with him, and he was unceremoniously expelled from his high school due to truancy. Eventually, he did graduate at another institution upon the insistence of his father. With school out of the way, Addie Banton, the name he originally used, and an homage to fellow Jamaican dancehall artist Buju Banton, was now free and clear to kick off his professional music career. At the age of 17, he released his first solo track called Love Fat Woman. A few years later, he decided to join forces with two other artists and form the group Vibes Cartel. It's not clear what happened, but the group dissolved fairly quickly, leaving Adija on his own again. He decided to adopt the group name, made a slight spelling change, and went from Addie Banton to Vibes Cartel. Another Homeland star, Bounty Killer, would soon play a very important role in Vibes' career. Vibes would become Bounty's protege, joining his collective called The Alliance, after the latter witnessed the former doing his thing on stage. By 2003, Vibes had released his debut album that October and risen significantly through the ranks to become the second highest selling Alliance member next to Elephant Man. That same year, an on-stage altercation between Vibes and another popular dancehall artist occurred. A pre-planned clash at annual reggae and dancehall festival Sting between Bounty and Ninja Man suddenly took an unexpected turn when Vibes all of a sudden popped up on stage. Rumor has it that Bounty got cold feet and decided to send Vibes in his place. Within a matter of seconds, Vibes' crew members, as well as himself, began throwing punches and assaulted Ninja Man. Vibes quickly apologized to his fellow dancehall contemporary and festival organizers for the brawl. A few days after the incident, they both appeared before the press to announce a settlement of their differences and to end any animosity. Later, Vibes would have another fallout, this time with Bounty. What happened, you may ask? Well, apparently, Bounty didn't appreciate the support Vibes threw Bounty's nemesis Beanie Man's way by not only attending his wedding, but bringing Bounty's ex-girlfriend as his date. Vibes and Beanie would also have a fallout of their own when, according to Beanie, Vibes reached a level of success and no longer needed his support. Vibes' personal life would take a positive turn in 2006, when he took a trip down the aisle with New York Bank supervisor Stacey Ann Alicia Elliott in a private ceremony in Kingston. The marriage, however, wouldn't last long, ending just two years later. The reason can be found in papers filed with the Jamaican Supreme Court, where Vibes alleges that his wife had given birth to a son who was fathered by another man. It was an easy conclusion to come to since Vibes claimed that he never even lived with his wife since the wedding, and his wife never visited him in Jamaica. That would have been the only way for them to be together since his US visa had been revoked. Vibes definitely didn't need to claim any more children than absolutely necessary since he would go on to have seven in total. After leaving the Alliance, Vibes formed an alliance of his own called the Portmore Empire, consisting of dancehall DJs and singers from his old neighborhood that he also signed to his new record label. 
a public feud between Vibes and his former Alliance collaborator, Mavado, started towards the end of 2006. Numerous diss tracks were traded back and forth between the artists. A press conference was held several months later to put an end to the hostility, but things quickly flared up again, culminating in a lyrical clash between the two at Sting 2008. As the New Year's stepped in, Vibes and Mavado's feud would take an ominous turn. Not only was the rivalry dominating Jamaican media, but it also spilled over into the streets. The two artists developed cliques of young people, referred to as Gaza for Vibes supporters, signifying the nickname given to his hometown, and Gully, representing people or things that come from the gutter or an impoverished area for Movado's allies. The Gaza-Gully War, as it was often referred to, resulted in many acts of street violence. In December of that year, after much bloodshed, Vibes and Movado met with the Jamaican Prime Minister in an attempt to end the feud once and for all. Vibe's success in music also led him to pursue other business ventures, namely a line of alcohol as well as condoms. Despite his massive popularity in Jamaica, crossover success has always eluded Vibe's. That is, until the track Rompin' Shop dropped. The single off his Pondi Gaza 2.0 album, released in February 2010, and featuring female Jamaican dancehall artist Spice, became his first to impact U.S. radio. The song's accomplishments, however, didn't come without controversy. It became banned on Jamaican airwaves and was at risk of potential copyright accusations for co-opting the beat from Neo's hit, Miss Independent, as well as a chorus that's reminiscent of 50 Cent and Olivia's Candy Shop. Another track that gained much international success was Clark's, a widely popular shoe brand that holds a special place in Jamaican's hearts. In 2011, Vibes released his own shoe line called Addies, as well as Cake Soap, a type of soap primarily used for clothes, but also, though less commonly, used for skincare, to treat various conditions such as acne. His brand, however, was intended for the purpose of skin lightening or bleaching. Vibes has come under major scrutiny and judgment over his admittance of the use of cake soap to lighten his own skin. He summed up the reason why in an interview with On Stage TV. In Jamaican culture, you have a lot of people who bleach, which is a large minority, if I might say so myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? And Vibes Cartel is a representation of every single group of people within the sphere of dance or music. Vibes Cartel is a thug, so represent for the gangsters. Vibes Cartel is an intellect, so represent for the intelligent people. Mm -hmm. Vibes Cartel see a lot of people in the society, skin bleaching. And Vibes Cartel just decide that, hey, people doing it, and Vibes Cartel is, is for the people, is by the people, and I'm from the people. So why not? More controversy followed Vibes into the following year, when the National Communications Network of Guyana banned his music from the airwaves, the first such action against a specific artist. The company's spokesman said his music contained, quote, obscene lyrics, end quote, and brought, quote, nothing positive, end quote, to the entertainment industry. Throughout Vibes' career, he has always brushed off the title of role model and rejected the notion that, as an artist, it's his responsibility to set a positive example for younger generations. Vibes Cartel has no social responsibility but, but mm -hmm. to deliver good quality music because I'm an entertainer. Yes. Note well enough, I'm not a social leader, nor a political leader, nor a religious leader. Vibes Cartel is an entertainer. I get paid to entertain. And all of this is entertainment. He's also quick to point out that it's easy for him to feel absolved from any social responsibility since his songs are so popular. And it's clear that the subject matter is what people want to hear. In September 2011, Vibes was arrested by police for marijuana possession. The issue seemed quite minor and was something he should easily be able to move on from. It wasn't until later when Vibes would find himself in the fight of his life when he was also charged with the murder of Jamaican businessman Barrington Burton, conspiracy to commit murder, and illegal possession of a firearm. While locked up, he published his book, The Voice of the Jamaican Ghetto, incarcerated but not silenced in 2012. Though Vibes was granted bail for the Burton murder in March, he remained in prison in connection with a second murder, 
of Clive Lizard Williams. He was charged, along with two others, including Vanessa Gaza Slim Sadler, with perverting the course of justice after she allegedly claimed that Clive had robbed her in order to mislead the police into believing that he was still alive. In July, a jury found Vibes not guilty of the charge of murder of Barrington Burton. However, he remained in custody pending the second murder case. The trial that went on for 65 days, the longest in history of Kingston's criminal courts, ultimately ended with a guilty verdict. One of the most damning pieces of evidence was a text message from Vibes' cell phone, claiming that the body was chopped up so thoroughly that it would never be found. It wasn't. Vibes insists that the message was falsified. The following month, he was sentenced to life imprisonment. Three other men were also convicted in connection to the crime and also received life sentences. Vibes would be eligible for parole after serving 35 years. While incarcerated, Vibes has continued to consistently release new music, even though Jamaican prison officials deny allowing him recording privileges, and Vibes himself has refused to state the exact source of the recordings. A logical explanation which Vibes voiced himself is that the material used to produce his songs were from unused archives he'd made before his sentencing. That, though, is highly unlikely, since the lyrical content includes mention of current events. While there are radio stations with recording facilities at both of the island's main correctional centers, the only inmates allowed to use them are the ones that are a part of the Rehabilitation Through Music program, which Vibes is not, since the program reportedly requires inmates to show remorse for their crimes, and he has maintained his innocence all through his trial as well as a failed appeal. He did make an amusing comment about the matter to Billboard magazine in 2020, saying, Many people say, yes, Vibes is recording in prison, but where's the proof? But this is Jamaica where you don't need proof to imprison someone. For the record, I'm not authorized to answer such above pay grade questions, so I'll say a tree fell in the forest and no one was there to hear it. In 2016, while in prison, Vibes released his most internationally successful album, King of the Dancehall, which peaked at number two on the US Billboard reggae charts. The album includes the single Fever, which topped various local music charts and became his most successful on streaming websites. Exactly six years later, in April 2020, a three-member panel of judges in the Jamaican Court of Appeal reaffirmed Vibes' conviction. One small victory was the reduction of his parole eligibility to 32 years and six months due to the judge's failure to consider time the singer had spent in jail while awaiting trial. Vibes will now be eligible for parole in 2046. No matter the accusations or conviction, Vibes still commands great respect and support from his fans all over the country and beyond. In August 2021, he surprised everyone when he granted an exclusive audio interview to Fox 5 News in New York. Lisa Evers, who conducted the jailhouse discussion, claimed that she'd been wanting to interview him for years, to no avail. Then, one night, the phone rang, and it was Vibes, ready and willing to set the record straight. Since the interview, an investigation was launched to determine how he was able to contact the American TV news station. Cell phones are defined as contraband in prisons in Jamaica, but despite best efforts by the authorities, the devices are still accessible to prisoners. Vibes had already been reprimanded previously after phones were found in his possession. When asked if he really believed that he would be set free soon, Vibes responded, Yes, of course I believe that, and to be totally honest, the system really wanted me thrown away. It was never about me being charged for a murder. It was about getting rid of Vibes Cartel, not Adija Palmer, the person. Vibes has no idea how many songs he's written while locked up, but he estimates the number to be in the thousands. He's not concerned about whether they'll all get released. He just wants to keep at it because he says it makes him better. His answer to the question of how he's able to keep his head up was simple. I have to because they want to destroy me. And if you know, Lisa, that somebody wants to destroy you, that's where they're going to get their pleasure from. Now you have to be on top of your game. You have to consistently be proving them wrong. So I think the haters are as much an influence to me in prison as the fans are. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and comment. Also, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you won't miss any future videos. See you next time.